So I can't believe I did it, but I actually went out and bought a two-year-old keyboard for 230 US dollars. And I think this is an absolute ripoff, And but I've been hearing a lot of hype over the past two years about how good this keyboard is and how it's gonna change my typing. So I'm really excited to try, to try this out right in front of you. So I'll quickly unbox this, give you my first impressions, and then 30 days later, I'm gonna give you my kind of perspective of using this kind of as a CSGO player. I love playing CSGO. And I'm also a developer and I also do write a lot. I have to write these scripts. So you're getting the perspective from someone that has a multi-use purpose for this type of keyboard. It's a really big box. So that was a pretty big box from Amazon, but as per usual, that's what they do. So the version I got is the linear version. And the reason why I like this one is because I'm, I do like playing a lot of games and I find that I want the least amount of actuation force. And I don't wanna really have an annoying click clackety, kind of like the blue switches. I've actually experienced all types of different switches, brown switches, blue switches, black switches. And honestly, I think the red linears are my favorite because uh, you know, for gaming, CSGO, for typing, for programming, it's it works all around for me. So this is super expensive, 230 US dollars. All these features like light speed, lightning, RGB, all this stuff, I really don't care for it. Uh, I don't care for RGB, nor do I care for wireless. Uh, I really, I would have much preferred if they created a half expensive one version that was wired, but unfortunately this is the case and this is the only low profile keyboard I know of other than some other ones like the Keytron, Keychrons, but they're always sold out or take forever to ship from China. Okay, so right away, I really like the look of it. It's kind of like a matte black, and that's really, that's something that's really cool. So, so far, it looks really nice. Okay, so it's not too heavy. I heard reports that it's pretty heavy, but it's not too bad. Oh boy, I'm really nervous. I really hope I didn't waste my money. I'm gonna start typing on it. So far, it looks really flat. I kind of like it. Now, what's really interesting is that my original DAS keyboard, which has red linear switches, is already pretty low profile. It's one of the low, most low profile mechanical keyboards out there that isn't called low profile. And I've, I've started to see this trend of mechanical keyboards throughout my work uh, because I was working as a software developer. And when we used to go into the office, a lot of programmers always had their own type of mechanical keyboard and they were really into it. They had all these customized things. I wasn't, over, I wasn't part of that community. Anyways, and I noticed that they just got really thick, almost ridiculously thick. And what's worst of all is that the travel distance of all these keys was super long. So if I'm playing a game, it takes a while for it to register. I have to press down, or if I'm typing a script, I really need to like, just, it's, it kind of feels like I'm writing on a 1940s typewriter. So it's kind of weird how we've kind of gone back in time. So hopefully the trend moves more towards low profile, but I don't know, maybe I don't like this. So let's find out. Now, yes, it's totally true that this isn't the only competitor, especially in 2022. I'm sure there's lots more different types of low profile keyboards, but what really annoys me from these keep mechanical keyboard companies is that they keep appealing to this weird group of people that want the keyboard size to only be kind of this area here. And as a developer, I just can't get used to that because I use the directional keys that are super important for navigating. And I use the home and end kind of to move my cursor back and forth in Windows environment. Now, not having a numpad does kind of suck, but I do I can get used to it and I can appreciate the ergonomics by having your mouse and the keyboard closer to you so that your shoulders and your hands are in a more neutral position, but losing out on the directional keys or losing out on all the function keys, which are extremely important for a programmer, but let's say you're debugging, usually F10 and F11. These are keys that you are typically binded to uh, stepping through functions and stuff like that. And just having the num keys over here feels very ergonomic. If you have the num keys that move over to here, it really, I don't know, I think that would be really kind of confusing. And then having to do combinations to get into function keys. I, I just find the whole experience of using those really small 60% uh, keyboards just that would be way too much of adjustment for me to get used to, especially for a programmer. And it's not just programming, it's any type of productivity. By having these extra keys, these function keys and arrow keys, you can bind them in Adobe Premiere, let's say your video editing software, and you can have more key binding. And it just makes the whole experience of doing productivity work a lot more ergonomic. Not having to rely on your mouse, which is a really bad idea because it causes strain and it slows you down significantly because you know moving your mouse is just very inefficient. By having everything on your keys, this should be way better. Okay. Shall we test this out? Ooh. 
Okay. This is really interesting. It feels like I'm typing on a MacBook. So, so far, right off the bat, it's kind of wobbly. All the keys are very wobbly, and that I'm not very happy about, but... I don't know. I think I like my desk keyboard more. This is kind of uh, disappointing. Four degrees, maybe? Now, I just want to talk about the feeling of this. Um, so far, I'm, I haven't been ser seriously impressed. I think typing on, let's say, for example, the Dirt God feels a lot better. This just feels like really kind of squeaky. Like the movement of the keys is just really bothers me a lot. I'm, I don't know if I really like this. I, it almost feels like a cheap $30 keyboard as I type on it. It doesn't have like that very tactile feeling. And that's maybe because I got the red linear switches, but this is, um, it doesn't feel solid. It's hard to explain it. Like when the keys bottom out, you almost kind of want it to be silent. And I, I just, I don't know. I, I've, I've experienced other mechanical keyboards and I much prefer those ones instead. And then... Okay, so I was able to compare the G915 with the DAS keyboard with red, red linear switches. And I did notice that it is substantially lower than the DAS keyboard, even though that mechanical keyboard is pretty low in terms of its own leap. Now, in terms of the difference in typing, I still kind of prefer the DAS keyboard. I'm not sure if I'm gonna really like this, but one thing I do kind of maybe regret is getting the linear switches. Perhaps the tactile switches would have been a better choice because these kind of feel maybe a little bit too much like a regular keyboard, like a non-mechanical keyboard that you would get for like less than 50 bucks. Another thing I noticed while I was typing with the Logitech G195 is that I didn't really need this wrist pad anymore. And this is a pretty low wrist pad. It's pretty small. It's not like a really big bump. Given that the keyboard is so low to the desk already, it feels pretty comfortable to type without a wrist pad. So maybe you can save like 30 bucks not having to buy one of these if you do decide to invest in one of these type of keyboards, these low profile keyboards. Okay, so we gotta do the sniff test. New technology always smells really good. Whew, I can smell the fumes, it smells really good. So we're gonna go into 30 days. I'm gonna test this out as a productivity thing and I'll report back. I'm obviously gonna report back on CSGO and productivity and see if this is actually worth the ridiculous expensive price of 230 US dollars. So after using the Logitech G915 10 keyless keyboard for over 30 days as my daily driver keyboard, I noticed a few things and unfortunately I didn't have a really good experience. First, let's talk about all the pros because I think this is a very impressive keyboard in some regard. The first is obviously the really impressive latency when I'm using the wireless function. When I was playing CSGO, or, uh, which is a competitive first person sh uh, shooter game, I had no issues with latency and in fact it felt really good. And also I found like the controls kind of like changing between Bluetooth and all the media controls, they were really nice and, and very intuitive and the RGB was a little bit cool but something that's something I don't really use much. And also in terms of just typing for productivity or programming and whatnot, I did find it fun to type on, but I didn't necessarily find it to make me type faster than a regular mechanical keyboard. In fact, I was always conflicted with typing on this because I would want to use my wrist pad, but then the wrist pad would be too big. So then I would remove my wrist pad and try to type on it, but it just didn't feel comfortable in any position. So the key takeaway here is that you don't necessarily need to buy a low profile keyboard if you want better ergonomics. If you have a really tall, traditional type of mechanical keyboard, you can simply use a wrist pad. So let's talk about my negative experiences using this keyboard. Now for CSGO, this is where everything kind of fell apart. I tried to get used to it over the 30 days, but I just could not get better at CSGO using this keyboard. And it's really weird because it has been marketed as a gaming keyboard. And a lot of YouTubers say that this is actually preferred for uh, gaming, but I find it very hard for anyone to kind of want to have a low profile keyboard, at least in a game like CSGO, where your control and shift are used very often to control your character. And I find that just because it's so low, it's very hard to have your pinky kind of grab it. My character would double register control and shift. It would be very unpredictable. And during very intense moments where you had to really feel that control key with your pinky finger or press the shift key with your 
um, ring finger, it was really difficult to do it. Personally for myself, I wouldn't recommend this type of keyboard for any type of first person shooter, especially CSGO. So another con I had with the G915 keyboard was that the build quality felt really, really cheap. There was a ton of wobble for every key and especially the small ones. Every time I typed on it, it just felt really unstable. And worst of all, when you shake this keyboard, it feels like kind of like a baby rattle. The whole thing shakes, you can feel everything movement, moving, it makes a really distinct rattle noise. Just the build quality, typing on it just didn't feel very stable, didn't feel very confident. So it, it just felt really cheap, kind of like one of those $20 membrane Dell keyboards that you get as part of your OEM package. Another annoyance I had with this keyboard were the keycaps and how it attracted a lot of fingerprint oils and stains and it just looked very shiny over maybe 10 days of usage. So it really made the whole keyboard look even cheaper and it kind of lost its cool matte black kind of finish. Now the last con I want to mention is that this is a rather expensive keyboard. I think if it was marketed a little bit less, maybe $50, I think it would be reasonable. But for what you get and how ch cheap it felt, I think it's just way too expensive. So yeah, that's it for my video. I hope this concludes what I think about the keyboard. Now, obviously 99% of the people love this keyboard. There were so many positive reviews. If you go on Amazon, it's got like five star reviews, but I just want to tell you that please don't trust the hype. I do recommend to go into a store like a Best Buy and try out the keyboard if you can, because it's going to be kind of annoying to have to like return it or try and sell it on the secondary market if you really don't like it. And another piece of advice is that perhaps the linear switches weren't the right choice for me. Perhaps the clicky or tactile would be a better choice because given how low profile this is, it's really hard to kind of just use it day to day without that kind of tactile feeling. So be careful buying this keyboard. Please let me know in the comment section if you kind of agree with my cons or pros. I would love to know how you felt when you first tried this keyboard. Maybe this is something that you have to maybe really, really want or get adjusted to. And also, if you have any keyboard recommendations, please, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to know. I did order the Leop Leopold 80% uh, keyboard. It's coming in a couple of weeks. It's going to take a long time. That was really expensive as well, but I'm kind of done with these kind of gaming based keyboards. I'm just going to go back to something that looks a little bit more traditional. Anyways, th that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.